Oh, wow. Life, <laughs> life changer. Truly, yeah. truly a life changer. Now, you recently partnered with Airbus to create the next generation ISS called StarLab. Tell me about how you're keeping up with the ever-changing landscape of the space sector and how you're meeting market needs. It's, it's a really good question. So, for example, we're leaning very heavily into the research component. So if you look at drug development, you know, so many innovations have occurred on the International Space Station, including insulin pumps, uh, memory foam, CAT scans, uh, and all this came about from research on the International Space Station. So drug development in biopharma is a big, big part of that. Mm -hmm. There's about 400 million of research happening on the International Space Station today. Mm -hmm. So StarLab is really a flying laboratory. Mm -hmm. We're leaning very heavily in that. Uh, Airbus is a fantastic uh, partner for that, and they're uh, building the module. Uh, and also, if you look at the success of the International Space Station, a lot of it has to do with the international cooperation. Uh, across uh, borders and across space agencies. So obviously partnering with a transatlantic partner like Airbus uh, allows us to facilitate commerce between NASA and ESA mm -hmm. and other space agencies. So there's a big advantage there. Tell me about your personal experience going to space. Oh, wow. Life, <laughs> life changer, truly, yeah. truly a life changer. I went into it intentionally trying to not have expectations, yeah. but the fact is I did mm -hmm. and they were very high and it just demolished those expectations. Wow. It's just a, it's something you can't unsee, something you can't unfeel. Uh, it changes you fundamentally as a human. And I knew that sort of intuitively going into it, yeah. but it is so powerful that um, it really is transformational. It's a transformational experience. Do you remember what was going through your head right before you lifted off? Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. So I told friends and family I would be terrified on the launch pad when it's, you know, T minus 10, that you're just a mess. Like how, you know, how can you not be, you're strapped to a controlled explosion. Uh, the fact is I was not nervous and um, not even a little bit. And it wasn't just me, it was our entire crew. And I think part of it is the training is very good. So you simulated that moment many, many, many times. And then the second part is you trust the hardware. You've been trained on all the systems. You know what the redundancies are you know what could go wrong and what the backup plan to something going wrong would be. And, and I trusted in the engineering team, I trusted in the design. And I also thought, look, this is a lifelong dream and if this is my time, you know, there's no better way to go than trying to, trying to live out your dream. So um, I think my heart rate was 62 on launch. Wow. Which I would have thought it would have been 162. Yeah, yeah, no, but that's like a resting heart rate. More or less, yeah. Yes, so yeah. I, the only thing I was nervous about was getting scrubbed. <laughs> Honestly, I'm like, if they scrub it, then, you know, will we ever launch? Wow, that's yeah. incredible. Amazing. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'll, I'll go up there one day when, when it's open for tourism. We need <laughs> journalists out there. Of course, Strahan was on my flight, Michael Strahan. Wow. Um, but yeah, I think the more the merrier. We need people, honestly, who can tell a story yes. and articulate it. You know, artists, journalists, um, writers, poets. And um, hopefully my, my dream is that we get Star Lab and other infrastructure built and we can uh, continue to reduce the launch prices and we get more and more people up there. Okay, well let me know when there's an open seat. I'll, I be, I'll be right there. I will, <laughs> count on it, Trinity. Thank you for joining me. My pleasure.